Okay, here we're looking at the last piece of muscle contraction. This is exactly what happens with the muscle fibers when the muscles actually contract. And so you've learned previously about two types of fibers called actin and myosin filaments. And the myosin ones have these little heads that kind of look like little ratchets that are literally going to grab onto actin and kind of pull them along like a little arm bending. It's pretty nice like that. ATP is obviously involved and so we're going to see how this actually works. There's another small detail. Um, it's not that small actually, but it involves calcium ions and this is why calcium ions are necessary for muscle contraction, but we're going to go into that uh, right afterwards. But first, let's summarize in these five steps exactly how muscle contraction actually happens. So I've already mentioned that these myosin filaments have little heads, like little ratchets that attach to specific binding sites on the actin molecules. So starting here with step one, the myosin filaments have heads that form cross bridges when attached to these actin filaments. And um, this is what happens when it's actually attached and there is no ATP present. It actually stays attached. When ATP is present as a molecule, the ATP, which stands for adenosine, adenosine triphosphate, actually binds to the myosin head and in the process of the ATP molecule binding to the myosin head, it actually causes it to detach from the binding site on the actin molecule. So that's a pretty important detail here. It seems kind of counterintuitive, but with, when ATP is present, the ATP will actually be used to help detach this. And as it gets detached, well, then the ATP gets used, um, hydrolyzed, and gets broken down to adenosine diphosphate and an extra additional inorganic phosphate. So what happens is the ATP is broken down and converted to ADP and when that happens it causes the head to actually change angle slightly and if it changes angle then you can see that when it reattaches it's actually going to reattach to a different place and so it's this detaching, bending, and reattaching at a slightly different place that allows it to actually I pull it along and keep on changing. So if I'm pulling a rope in a game of tug of war, for example, I pull, I let go, and I hold onto the rope a little bit further along, then I pull, I let go with the other hand, grab the rope a little bit further along, and I keep doing that process, and that actually helps me to pull the rope towards me and beat my friends and feel very proud of that. So you can see that's happening here. So when the heads attach to the actin uh, filament a little bit further than where they were previously, then we're ready to go. And then the actual movement, the actual power stroke, as it's called, is when that ADP and phosphate is literally released from the head. It detaches. So these actual molecules detach, and that causes the movement of the actual myosin head, and that pulls the actin, the actin, sorry, the actin filament along. So that's called the power stroke. And then when you see an image like this, you can, you can start to understand how we're getting from this relaxed muscle image to this contracted muscle fiber image. It's basically all these little heads are attaching and then moving along, detaching, and then pulling everything back towards the center. Okay, And so that's why the sarcomere actually looks like it's changing in width. So the final detail that I wanted to mention here it involves calcium ions and uh, there are two more proteins that are involved in this. So we have actin, we have myosin, and there's two others called troponin and tropomyosin. And I'm going to use a smiley face and squiggly line and some calcium ions to help illustrate this a little bit. Um, when your brain sends information to your muscle fibers to contract, that information is going to be uh, delivered through motor neurons and motor neurons are the neurons that are moving that are opposite of sensory neurons and they're the ones that are actually causing your muscle to do things so they're sending signals to effector organs things that secrete hormones or things that will muscles that will actually move and so at the very end of that muscle there will be something that at the end of the signal path there will be something called the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is 
going to be a little bit dif difficult to illustrate in this entire thing here, but the sarcoplasmic reticulum will release calcium ions. So calcium ions are very important for muscle contraction. And what's, what happens is these calcium ions are going to actually help move something out of the way in order to allow this uh, attaching to actually happen. So wrapped around these actin filaments is a protein called tropomyosin. Okay, we're going to see this here. All right, tropomyosin is like a long fibrous protein that wraps around the actin filaments. We already have some filaments here, but there's more stuff that's wrapped around. And literally, this tropomyosin may actually be blocking the binding sites. So if you see, if you see these two dark, darker colored circles here, and that's the binding site for the myosin head, uh, it may actually be blocked by this particular a protein called tropomyosin, which is wrapping it up. So you can think of it as, this is these are myosin heads, so I would think of this as tropomyosin. It's trying to trip up, trip up myosin. Trip up myosin. Myosin can't bind because it's being tripped up by tripomy trip, trip up myosin or tropomyosin, okay? So we got to get the tropomyosin out of the way, and that's actually the role of these calcium ions, because they come down and they bind to these smiley faces, another protein, these smiley faces are representing troponin, and then when the calcium actually binds to troponin, so let's pretend like calcium is binding to troponin, check out what happens, the binding of the calcium to the troponin actually causes the tropomyosin to slightly shift, revealing these binding sites for myosin to actually join in. Okay, so the calcium ions come in, they bind to a protein called troponin. The binding to troponin causes tropomyosin to undergo some kind of conformational change, and then it actually ends up revealing these active sites. So no calcium, no muscle contraction. That's why you gotta have calcium, besides for healthy bones and teeth, as we learned in public service announcements growing up as kids. So uh, that summarizes all of that together, so please take a look. And one more question to leave you with. Uh, please pause the video if you are if you want to think about this. I'm just going to cut the video short. The correct answer for this is actually C for cowboy. All right, have a nice day.